next class of systems that we are going to look at is based on the principle of what is called as additivity a system is said to be additive if it satisfies the following consider if you have two inputs say x1 of t that produces an output as y1 of t you have if you have another input say x2 of t that produces another output say y2 of t then we do an experiment the experiment is if we add the two input signal x of t x1 of t and x2 of t and if we check what is the output the output must also be the addition of two individual outputs so that must be equals to y1 of t plus y2 of t if this is the case then the system is said to be additive so for a system to be additive the two inputs must give you the same outputs if you add two inputs you must get the corresponding outputs to be added at the output so if you have x1 of t giving y1 of t you have x2 of t giving y2 of t x1 of t plus y2 x2 of t must give y1 of t plus y2 of t and this must be true for any values of t so this must be true for any input and all t let's understand this with an example so we are looking at what is called as additivity example say y of t equals to 2t 2 2 into x of t let's consider this example now we are doing two experiments here the experiment is first we take the input as x1 of t the x1 of t would result in the output as twice of x1 of t if we take x2 of t as another input then we get the another output as twice of x2 of t now the first one that we have obtained is y1 of t as the second one is y2 of t now the experiment that we are going to perform is addition of the inputs x1 of t plus x2 of t now if you add the input the output is going to be twice of x1 of t plus x2 of t that is going to be twice of x1 of t plus twice of x2 of t now you can clearly observe that the output that you are getting by adding the input is the output obtained by the individual inputs so this here x1 of t twice into x1 of t is the output 1 and twice into x2 of t is output 2 you can see that here the output 1 here and the output 2 here so if we add the inputs we get the individual outputs also added if this is the case then we say that the system is additive let's take another example so 
से वाई ऑफ टी इक्वल्स टू एक्स स्क्वेर ऑफ टी वी परफॉर्म द सेम एक्सपेरिमेंट से इफ यू हैव एक्स वन ऑफ टी वी गेट द आउटपुट वाई वन ऑफ टी एज एक्स वन ऑफ ऑफ टी स्क्वायर इफ यू हैव एक्स टू ऑफ टी अनदर इनपुट वी गेट अनदर आउटपुट एज वाई टू ऑफ टी एज द स्क्वायर ऑफ एक्स टू ऑफ टी Now, if you add the inputs x1 of t plus x2 of t, let's see what is the output. So the output is the square of x1 of t. So this is the new output that is y of t equals to x1 of t plus x2 of t whole square. and we can clearly see that this is not equals to y of 1 of t plus y2 of t you can see that from here y1 of t is x1 square t and y2 of t is x2 square t but if we add the individual inputs we get the output as x1 of t plus x2 of t whole square that is not equals to x square plus x1 square plus x2 square therefore this system is said to be non additive so this is not additive next class of systems that we are going to look at is dependent on it is based on scaling or homogeneity now what does that mean a system is said to be homogeneous if it satisfied This the following. So if we have the input x of t, and if you get the output as y of t, then we do an experiment. The experiment is to scale the input. So you are scaling the input by a factor of say c. So you have c into x of t. Then at the output, if you are getting the scaled output, say c into y of t then the system is said to be a homogeneous system please note that here the scaling factor is the same the scaling factor of input and the output is the same so if we have an input x of t that is giving you y of t if we scale the input you should get the scaled output and this must be true for all the values of t if that is the case then the system is said to be homogeneous and c here is any constant c is a constant often for that matter it can be a complex constant also let's take an example Say y of t equals to x square of t. Now let's do the experiment. Say x of t, if it is giving you y of t equals to x square of t. If you scale the input, and if we check the output, that is going to be y of t. equals to c square x square of t now if we scale the output here we are scaling the input and checking what the output is now we scale 
the output itself so if we have c into y of t is going to be c into x square of t now just compare both of these you can clearly see that these two are not the same so in similarly in the previous types of systems as we have done the experiment here we are first scaling the input ch checking what the output is and then when scaling the output if you are getting the same result then we say that the system is homogeneous but in this case as we look that the scaling the input is producing c square into x square of t where if you directly scale the output we are getting c into x square of t these two are not the same therefore this system is said to be not homogeneous this is not homogeneous let's take another example example say so y of t equals to t into x of t now in order to check whether the system is homogeneous or not we do the same experiment the experiment is scale the input scale input and see what is the output so if we scale the input say c into x of t what is the output that we are getting we are getting y of t as c into t times x of t so we are scaling the input here and if we scale the output that means c times y of t is equals to c into t times x of t and we can clearly see that these two are the same therefore the scaled input is producing the scaled output so scaled input produces scaled output and also that scaling factor is the same that is c therefore this system is homogeneous It's homogeneous system Let's stop here.